In this video, you look at one very important piece of the Timer Pro models and scheduling, and this one right here, which you can see here is the on-screen Yamazumi charts of the actual schedule build sequence reflecting the model mix on the line here. So again, this video here is only going to talk about this one little section here, but it's a very, very important section. So what we have is the detail for each of the models that are going to go down the line in this example. We have two. This is model A that you're looking at right now. And if we switch to model B, it's a different combination of uh, elements and options here. So again, you can have up to 30 different uh, models here. And notice here that each model has to go down through all 12 stations to complete the process. I go back to model A. And again, you can see the same 12 stations here. Then I bring in my schedule here. And what it's done, it's projected when individual issues are going to occur here. Now, if you look at the model column highlighted in blue, if you click on one of these items, it will tell you at what station this particular model is going to exceed the tack time. Not only that, there in the right, you can see the percentage by which it's going to exceed the tack time. Obviously, a tack time that's only 1.8% over the target tack time may not be as important as a process that's 12.9% over the tack time, as shown here. So you can click on each of the ones highlighted in blue to see where the issues are. And over here in the scheduled date and time, it shows you by date and time when issues are going to happen here. So if I click on the 10th build sequence, when that is introduced to the line, and it tells you right there in the top, when model B build sequence 10 starts production, the following models will exceed the 1400 tag time. And you can see it's build sequence number seven, which is model A at station four. The time is going to be 1676. That's in excess of 276 over the 1400 tack time, which is 16.4%. But at the same time, build sequence number three, which is model B, will be at station eight. Its station time is going to be 1608 because of the option combinations, which exceeds the 1400 tack time by 208, which is 12.9% over the tack time here. So each one of these, if you click on it, you can see the issues that are occurring at each point here. If I make this a little smaller here, I can size this any way I like. I'm going to make it smaller here. And I'm going to bring it down and show you what we're seeing in the background here. Now, right now, if I go back up and I click on the uh, build sequence number one here. So what you're seeing in the background here is actually the Yamazumi chart as the production schedule is introduced onto the line. You can see at the top here, it says displaying build sequence number one which is model B at station number one. And this is the time it's being introduced, this particular date at eight o'clock in the morning. And you can see right here in the label, it says station one, the model equals model B, the build sequence number one in this particular schedule. If I come down here to the bottom right-hand corner and I say step forward, I click on the step forward at the bottom right-hand corner here, it moves it forward one step. So now that build sequence number one has moved on to the second station. It's still model B. And behind it is coming build sequence number two, which is a model A. And you can see that here, build sequence number two here. It says right here it's model A coming on. It's following the model B onto the line. If I hit the step forward again, again it will advance the schedule. And now our build sequence number one has moved on to the third station, station three. Behind it is build station number two. It's a different model coming in at station two. And then behind it is build sequence number three coming on to station number one. And we're back to a model B here. But the model B here has different options. If I scroll to the right here, you can see it's got different options than the original model B at build sequence number one. So each of the Yamazumi bars that you see here are representing that specific build sequence with the option combination at that point in time. And if I make this a little bit smaller here, we can see it just progress through here. So I step forward. And you see the product coming on. Then we get to the fourth station here. Here I have a couple of tasks that are above the tag time for these particular combinations of options. And you can see, so station number four, model B, which is build sequence number one, is going to exceed the tag time. In fact, if I hover over this one right here, you'll see those numbers there. So you can see it, model B, down at the bottom there, model B is station four. The cycle time is 14.84, which is 84 over the 1400 tack time, which is 5.6%. So you can see here, this particular overage here is equal to 5.6%. Come back over here, and the one currently at build sequence number three, 
which is currently at station 2. You can see it at station 2 up here. It is exceeding it just by a little bit here, and we can see how much is exceeding it by by hovering over here. It's exceeding the 1400 tack time by 25, and the percent is 1.8%. So that's not maybe as critical as the one that uh, is currently at station 4. And so we can keep on hitting the step forward here. And it will keep on bringing on the build sequence one station at a time as we go through here. This is to try and show you what's actually happening here. If I drag it up the top here and I keep on going, you'll see it continue to flow through. So here we go. A couple of issues here you can see here. Uh, at station two, I've got an issue here, up here. And I've also got an issue down here at station number eight. And we can see that if we just hover over that build sequence eight, it tells me what ones it is. So it gives you the same summary down here. You can keep on advancing through the build sequence and it builds up the Yamazumi chart for each of them. Now, eventually, the product is going to start to exit the process. You can see here, now it's actually coming off the process here. So displaying build sequence number 10 at station 3. So if I bring this back up again and show you the whole schedule, you can see we've got 10 items on here. But then we've got the runout here. We're calling it the runout over here on the right here. You can see when build sequence number 10 comes on, it's at station number one, but it has to flow through all 12 stations. And that's what it's doing. This is what we're calling the run out over here. And we're also highlighting to you when you're going to have issues. And I can double click on this. It'll take me right to that particular point. And you can see right at that point, this one exceeds the tack time here. And what that is here, you can just hover over it. That's uh, build sequence number seven, model A at station eight. The cycle time is 1551 an excess of 151, which is 9.7% over the tack time here. So we can keep on doing this, stepping it through here. This is showing you in real time what's actually happening here. Now, this is obviously manually driven. And what we're going to do in the next video, we're going to talk about the schedule issues here. This is going to be a report that you can generate that will summarize all your issues in the process for you. But we do this presentation here with the stepping through. And we can also step backwards as well if you want to play it back. So you can actually see what is happening as we run the schedule through the process. So in this video, we looked only at this one option here, the on-screen Yamazumi charts of the actual schedule build sequence, which reflected the model mix on the line and the build sequence going down the line.